For the New York State AFL-CIO, I'm Darcy Wells, and this is Union Strong. I'm proud. I'm proud. I am proud. I'm proud to be Union Strong. To be Union Strong. Be Union Strong. Be Union Strong. I'm a teacher, and I'm Union Strong. I wouldn't have it any other way. There are nearly 190,000 cases of occupational disease and injuries that are reported in New York State every year. And we know that work-related health conditions are often underreported. In this podcast, we'll talk about the services available to workers to prevent injuries and illnesses through a statewide network of occupational health clinics. Our guest today is Dr. Michael Crane, who's the medical director of the Mount Sinai Selikoff Centers for Occupational Health. Uh, Doctor, welcome, and thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is how to prevent workplace injuries and, and the best way to treat workplace injuries and some of the services that are available to people that I don't think a, a lot of people are aware of. And I think it makes sense because we're coming up on Workers' Memorial Day, April 28th, which is not only a time to reflect on people who lost their lives on the job, but also for us as a union movement to fight for treatment and prevention of of workplace injury. So I I wanted to begin by, if you could just explain a little bit about the Occupational Health Clinic Network, because as I understand it, New York State is the only state that has something like this. So can you talk to me a little bit about the health... um, the health clinic networks, what they are, and some of the services you provide. Sure, absolutely. And um, thank you very much for having me on. Um, I am honored to be here as a representative of the uh, New York State Occupational Health Clinic Network. Um, the network goes back to um, uh, 1988 um, and was founded really uh, by a consortium of uh, physicians who had expertise in occupational medicine, um, and mostly by um, members of um, the unions in New York State. Um, I should also note that we all here um, recognize and are grateful for um, everything that the unions have done uh, to support uh, occupational health for workers. We, I, I wouldn't be here without the union movement. OSHA wouldn't be here without the union movement. NIOSH wouldn't be here without the union movement. You guys are the ones who have done this. So Sinai is sort of a unique place um, to speak about this from. In the, in the, in the second half of the last century, um, we know that people were using lots and lots of asbestos. Mm-hmm. Um, in World War II, for example, in the asbestos was here in this pile, and the the steel for the Navy ships was in this pile, and they just went in together, and off they went. Unfortunately, as we all learned over time, uh, it also is a very effective poison for our respiratory system. And the the gentleman at physician at Mount Sinai, Dr. Selikoff, was really a world leader in bringing that to the attention of not only um, working people, uh, but to governments and leaders around the world. Uh, he actually was a doctor in New Jersey, and he was near an asbestos plant, and he was looking at x-rays and you'd see all these funny things on the x-rays of the, of the guys who came from the plant. And so, what's that? And from those simple questions, he went on to become really the father of the whole movement to um, remove asbestos from, from workplaces and homes and rural much better for it now around the world. But it was those sorts of people asking questions about, you know, you're a worker just there with an unusual finding, who really brought about this occupational medicine discipline. And what they did was work in conjunction with leaders at the work site, even before there was unions. And then when they became unions, they continued to work together. And, you know, all of that, OSHA, the OSHA standards that protect us, came out of those interactions. Um, So we try to continue that as much as we can. We are, the Occupational Health Clinic Network, uh, starting in 88, was really brought about by union members. There's no question Mm -hmm. about it. Um, Members of the New York State Assembly, New York State Senate, worked on this, decided 
they set it up around the state at various locations from Buffalo to the tip of Long Island and to fund it on a regular basis um, such that they could employ physicians such as myself and other paramedical personnel, uh, have data systems, and be in medical centers where it, just like in the union movement, we doctors need backup uh, and we work on a question. We don't have all the answers. So we talk with our confers about what do you think this is? is uh, could this be work-related? Mm -hmm. And try to develop approaches and treatments for work-related conditions. And at each of the, um, at each of the centers, uh, the Buffalo Center, Rochester Center, Albany, so on, um, they brought in people who understand risks, who understand how to work together to get rid of risks, and hopefully out of that to um, develop procedures and um, protective equipment uh, to protect workers. Well, let's talk about like an example of something um, and how the process works. So sure. um, if if a worker is injured at work, uh, say, I don't know, um, maybe I have a job where I lift things and I, and I you know, I feel like my shoulders really been bothering me and now I, I can't lift my shoulder without pain. And I might just go to my regular doctor and maybe they'll give me uh, physical therapy, painkillers, whatever. Talk about how you can make a difference and what's that process for you maybe recognizing and me, because I, maybe I didn't recognize it, that, oh, this is a workplace injury and there's really another avenue that I can take to get care. Yeah, and I think that's a great question because it's, it goes to the heart of what we do. What makes us different? Well, I mean, obviously we want to look at you, right? You, you're here with a sore shoulder. We want to take the best care of you. We can, if we need an x-ray, we'll get that. Maybe we can get a specialist to examine the shoulder, whatever that is. But what we do that I think is helpful um, to not only you, but the people who work with you and the rest of the people who work in unions and in your type of task, is we try and take that injury, right? And we say to you, okay, let's get do all the shoulder manipulation. Do you need an x-ray? We'll get you a diagnosis, and maybe it's a tendonitis. Let's say you have a tendonitis in your shoulder. I was like, okay, we, we, can, we can treat this tendonitis. We can give you some medication, maybe some Motrin. We might wet a sling for a while, something like that. But we will also say to you um, things about your job, and we'll ask questions about, do you think this came about because of your work? And maybe you'll say back, yeah, it was fine. I went to the job and I lifted this thing over my head and I felt this pop and I haven't been able to move my shoulder since. And we'll go, oh, okay. So a doctor in an office usually has to stop at that point, right? And he's got 10 other patients waiting. He said, fine, I'll, this is terrific. You know, we'll, we'll uh, take this, come back. We'll, we'll get the x-ray. We think you'd be doing fine. If you're not better in a day and a half, give me a call. Boom. And that's sort of your care. What this program will do is say to you all of that um, and also say, if you really think that that occurred because of that motion at work, would it be okay if we talk to other people at the work site or ask your boss to go have a look at the work site, see if we can walk through? Because what we also bring, right, is not just the tools to take care of the individual worker, but also... To, to analyze and prevent that injury from happening again to another worker. So, and you, you know this very well, but um, these types of injuries usually fall into the realm of the field of ergonomics, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the science of moving and working, and which has morphed into a wonderful uh, ability to study um, individual workers and processes and groups of workers, analyze movements, analyze the workplace, and see that if that next injury can be prevented. And it often can. You know, if it was if it was here instead of up here, you might mm -hmm. not have hurt your shoulder. So right. simple things like raising and lowering the box can be really helpful. And you're really, so you're doing, your pre that prevention too is going to be beneficial not only to the workers, but the employers, Absolutely. because you're not going to have other people maybe out with those similar kind of injuries, which is not something that's going to happen by me just going to see my doctor. Absolutely right. It's a it's a win win. It really is. Now, 
we don't often um, have great success in convincing employers of that, right? So, uh, you know, we'll say, can well, we that's where the more? unions come in. <laughs> yes. We can help yes. that convince them. Yes. yes. And exactly. so, and so I'm, I know, I know you recently got some grant money from the state, several million dollars. Um, what will that money be used for? So the money that comes from the state is is sorted out amongst all the, the all the sectors, and we you know we write our um, I think it's every, every five every five years we'll write up this is what we've done. We saw umpteen patients. We uh, did this many um, you know uh, worksite uh, tours. We um, you know we had eight thousand X rays. Uh, mm-hmm. We you know we trained uh, two hundred people in various uh, preventive techniques and safety, and and then we'll say, okay, well, our plan for the next five years is to you know double the safety talks and maybe reduce the on-site uh, visits, uh, so we could spend more time going out to various uh, warehouses, which are now springing springing up, and we mm-hmm. could get new information about work. So, so we'll put a plan together and we'll submit that, just like um, researchers would you know submit a uh, grant to NIH or to a research facility. We're not really applying for research, we're, we're asking the state to, you know, agree with our, our process in terms of investigating and, and uh, informing workers and treating workers. Can you give me some, I'm just curious about some of the injuries that you see at the center. Um, you know, is there something that's more common? And I'm also interested in the professions. Is there, uh, you know, some you see on a fairly regular basis? Well, I mean, for uh, and now I'm going to give away my age, so please don't write this down. It's okay. Like, for, for all through, <laughs> don't judge example, me here. All, all through the computer era, as the keyboards came out, yeah, right, you were typing, typing, typing. People were not familiar with that. The keyboards weren't that good. So, wrist, mm-hmm. carpal tunnel syndrome, right? Carpal referring to wrist. Um, it was rampant in in offices. People didn't really know how to address the computer and didn't understand that so much of their work was in the future and going forward going to be at that screen. And what happened is you you would have people typing all day without mm-hmm. a break and then, you know, go faster, get it done. Maybe I can go to lunch if I do it. But I so that blew onto the scene, um, you know, I guess I'm going to date myself now, but that was 20... What? No, more than 20 years ago. What did happen, though, is that employers realized they had to make incremental improvements in those desks and they better support for people, more breaks. You didn't have your, you know, you weren't typing there till your hands fell off. I'm just curious if you, if I asked you, what are like the top two professions that you see for workers, workplace injury? What is it? Well, I mean, f- for relatively severe injuries, um, construction is construction, farming. Uh, fishing, mm, farming, uh, mm-hmm. you know, farming with the equipment, um, sure. construction, unfortunately, the falls. And, you know, when you're digging a trench, the trench can uh, can cave in if it's not mm-hmm. properly done. Um, so those are very, very, you get frequent injuries, but you also get very, very serious injuries. Um, the, the, the desk workers, you know, their problems have not gone away. And Many people, for example, who were in close quarters when COVID blew through, I mean, were under constant stress, particularly in the beginning, because you're in this room, you think the ventilation is good, you're trying to do your work, but somebody's coughing over there. Am I going to get it? Mm-hmm. And the stress uh, and the fear uh, that COVID brought, I, I think, ratcheted up um, uh, the concerns of workers in any kind of indoor space. Mm-hmm. So that was, I mean, that was really kind of different. We hadn't had that situation with that type of fear in a long time. Right. Uh, let's talk about the process a little bit, um, just to help people understand of the services that are available to them. And also we should point out, you can't be turned away for your inability to pay. Right. So the, I think, I feel like a lot of times the most natural thing for somebody to do, and I said this before, if you, you have an injury, maybe you know it's workplace injury, but you immediately go to your own doctor, fine. Yeah. Um, but then now we're trying to educate people that these clinics are available. 
what do I do? Like, how do I access your services? So let's say you, you hurt your wrist, went to your own doctor, and you've got a splint on, and you're okay, you know? You're feeling pretty good. You, even going back, you're a little bit slower with your left hand on the keyboard or whatever you're doing, but you're feeling pretty good. Um, we would certainly still welcome you. We would certainly want to talk about your injury. We would certainly want to hear from you about are there other workers who've had the same thing, that question in particular. Because if that's true, um, really what, what makes our lives, what m makes my day bright with sunshine is when we get the opportunity to go to a workplace and prevent other accidents from happening. Um, right, that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point. So if we can get into a warehouse or if we can get into a factory or even into an office, Look at the what maybe look at the way the people are sitting. Are they? My posture is terrible, by the way. Where, 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 or how they're you know how they're addressing the desk, or are they? You know, is their their equipment uh, re reasonably spaced so they don't straining their neck when they're doing things? Uh, in a workplace where this construction is, is it free of barriers? I know mm -hmm. slips and trips and falls, obviously. Right. Good fall protection. We can go in. And maybe because you told us that you got hurt on this job, we might be able to prevent the next accident, which is a tremendous strength to be able to have. That's what other doctors want to have, but they don't have because they don't have the ability to go on the work site. And we do. So we, we really encourage that. If, if, if at all possible, we, we have industrial hygienists. We'd love to have them go out. We have ergonomists. We'd love to have them go out and look at the work site. Obviously, the boss might say no, and sometimes we can talk the boss into it because they also don't. And again, that's where um, unions have a role, too, <laughs> helping Absolutely. to move that Absolutely. conversation along um, to protect the workers. So in closing, um, Doctor, what the, uh, what's the uh, final message that you would have for workers to uh, know about the clinics? What's the one thing that you want them to know? So we're open for you. We're here to help. We can help. We can talk to bosses at work sites and come in and help you work safer, work better. Uh, we go from the tip of Long Island to Buffalo, uh, and we can get to your workplace. If, if you can invite us in, if you can't, come see us and we'll try to work remotely into, and, and, and improve the workplace with you. So we're here for you workers, period. Well, Dr. Crane, thank you very much for taking the time with us today. And we're going to make sure that we share in our show notes um, links to all the different clinics, including yours, so that people are aware of where these services are and how they can access them. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Join me on the podcast is our communications and campaigns coordinator, Liz O'Neill, who also edits the podcast. Hi, Liz. Hi, Darcy. So there was some really useful information out uh, that Dr. Crane talked about that I think it's fair to say that a lot of people might not be aware uh, of these services and this network that is available to them. Right. You know, uh, if someone gets injured at work, maybe um, it crops up like a little bit later. It's not top of mind that it was a workplace injury. They might not be thinking about or even know about all these resources that are available to them. So in our show notes, we'll put links and um, they'll be able to see exactly where these clinics are. Yeah, I really encourage everyone listening to go or watching to go take a look at the show notes because we're going to have, you know, um, resources on there with like a map of all the clinics that you can get to around the state. Um, you know, and it's just really good to know about this sort of thing because you should take advantage of it if you happen to have a workplace injury pop up. Yeah. And like you mentioned, prevention is key, too. So it might not just stop with you. Or you could be helping other people as well. So. Right. OK, Liz, thank you very much. Thanks, Darcy. This has been a production of the New York State AFL-CIO. Our president is Mario Salento. Our secretary treasurer is Terry Melvin. We're a federation of 3,000 unions representing 2.5 million union members, retirees, and their families with one goal, to raise the standard of living and quality of life of all working people. We keep New York State unions strong by fighting for better wages, better benefits, and better working conditions. For more information on the labor movement in New York, visit nysaflcio.org. Until next time, stay union and stay strong.